filled up the tank so she had a full gas and it's raining and I'm on the highway and man I'm like hitting my phone's going off I'm hitting ignore hitting ignore hitting ignore and I, I hydroplaned <laughs> smash right into a tree and I saw the tree coming dude we smashed the cars like this looks like a what are those saxophones looks like a saxophone dude I was like oh accordion yeah accordion yeah 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 <laughs> It's all good though. <laughs> it's disgusting. This is I knew gross. What you meant. <laughs> yeah, you know what I meant. So, dude, I'm like, and uh, I'm like, oh my god! I woke up and I'm like, wow, I'm still alive. Holy shit! Yeah, well, New Hampshire don't play around either when no. it comes to breaking the law. No. So, you know, I knew I had warrants in Mass already. Mm -hmm. I was already in trouble down there. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I took, I had a bunch of Zanny bars. I tucked them up, and. Uh, you know, I threw away everything that was in the car. I walked to the top of the embankment. I knew something was wrong. All my ribs are broken. I'm like, ah, I had to climb out the sunroof. I get to the top of the embankment, and friggin', there's, the are already there. And I tried walking by him like he'd never see me, like he wasn't there. I tried. Mm -hmm. He goes, oh, hi, how you doing? Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, what's going on, man? He's like, hey, listen, uh, dude, what, what's, do you, is that your car down there? I go, what car? All you hear is... From the windshield wipers, I go, no, 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 what do you, what, what, what car? Hey everybody, welcome to the Bounce Back Podcast. I'm your host, B. Luke. Before I get into this episode, I just want to thank my boy, Josh Medeiros, for the gear, war boy gear, and congratulations on winning your fight. So let's get into the episode. I got a special guest with me today. Hi to Boston, Mr. Tour God Nick over there. Uh, you yeah, could baby. give the nickname as well too if yep. you want. My, uh, I'll give all my government, no, no shame there. Nick Matthews, I go by Speedbag or Speedy. Old name, in fact, one of your guests that you had on prior, my boy Justin gave me that nickname years ago, 2000. Nine, ten area, yep. and I, people come up to me still. They're like, "What's up, Nick?" Uh, they, they go, "What's your name?" I'm like, "Nick." They're like, "Oh wait, Speedbag." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> Once you get a nickname, it's over. It's, that's, it, it. that's it. It does. I, and I asked him. I said, "Why? You, why couldn't you give me something cool like Ice or Killer or something <laughs> like that?" But anyway, but yeah, man, uh, I'm 34. I run this, uh, a, a tour guide company. It's on foot. It's called Boston City Tours. I got the, it's on the back and everything, tour guide. Nice. Thanks to my buddy Frankie Hoyt, my best. I've had the same best friend since first grade. Um, you know, wherever you want to go with this, you want me to start young age. I just, you know what this is about for me? Like, I'm coming up here is just Nick. I'm coming up here like with no facade. I don't, you know, I'm not repping anything. I don't even, mm -hmm. you know, I, at this time, I do not believe in the theory of God. I believe in Ayn Rand. Um, it's just my personal thing. And I, I like, you know, I understand religion. I've read the Bible, you know, front to back. Um, it's just not my thing. But I don't, you know, push my stuff on people. But I, I understand Catholicism. I understand being Protestant. I was adopted at 12 by a, uh, a great person, a reverend, he's passed away now, named uh, Pastor Mike Matthews. So my last name is Matthews now. Um, prior to that, I lived in Quincy before, so I'll break it down quick. I got adopted at 12. Prior to that, I was in, um, I was in Quincy. We we're living in Quincy, in between Quincy and Southey by uh, Owen Third. And when I got taken away from my family, my biological mother and father, I was living in uh, Quincy, going to Bernazani School there okay. by Wollaston, nice area. And, um, you know, I want to tell people, like, the reason I want to tell talk about this because I lived in some of the best towns in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. some of the best, Hingham, Weymouth, Quincy. Um, I lived in Hull for a little while, and, um, but... I love the city of Boston. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel at home there. I didn't, mm -hmm. and um, I wasn't. They, they, you know. I now, now let me just, you know, throw a curveball in here. I met some great people, and I'm actually friends with some of them people to this day. But most of them couldn't stand me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got adopted, and they were like, "Who's this kid?" Right. Like, you know what I mean? They, they would just hang them. Was very snobby. Um, I don't know how to really put it, but it's they're just snobby, and yeah. I, you know, I mean no disrespect for that. If you're from there, whatever, but. And I'll tell you why in a second, why I thought so, you know, um, prior to being adopted, like I said, I was living with my mother, I'll, you know, my mother has passed away and since then, but, you know, she had problems with drugs and uh, there was a fellow on your podcast, I can't think of his name, he had the beanie, mm -hmm. black guy, I could really relate with him because he's like, you know, he's talking about like, how can we see race when 
our parents are kind of messed up and we're coming to school. We don't have time to look at race. Yeah. People understand that. My man. boy's it's, solar boy. So whether you had white children who were who were broke in Charlestown, mixing with so-called niggas that was broke in Charlestown, it wasn't going to change nothing. Everybody's fucked up coming from houses. Right. They got crackhead parents just like us mm. in the household. The skin ain't enough to have as a difference. Right. When we share that both of our parents just sent us to school up and they was getting high last night and we we got more right. similarities you yeah. feel me yep. so all of those differences we ain't able to see not in boston public hey, yeah, big, big shout out to him hell yeah man that was a great episode too he's a great smart dude man just a great old he's very dude, humble man. too Absolutely. just great with his work like that was a good episode i really liked that one um you know i've been riding with you since day one like i did time my first bid was with your cousin ronnie right um, Nikki Camerata, uh, Georgie, peace. rest in peace, Georgie Francos, R.I.P. A lot of these guys that people throw names around, they don't even know them. Right. And they saw me grow up in jail. And what we called it was putting in work, not crashing out. Now, right, right. now they call it crashing out. Mm -hmm. But there was times where you had to do shit that you didn't even, like, dude, I, I'm not, I'm not, I've never been on that tough guy shit. It's not mm -hmm. my style. Right. I'm not, like, in there trying to. You know, anyhow, but I'll go back to the beginning. So, because, you know, this, the, the prison thing, and I'm not saying with you or anybody, it's just, like, we get it. Yeah. There's so many, uh, you know, they got the rats coming in there on the 60 days in doing that shit, and they're trying to get, like, we know what it, what it is in there. Um, the, like, I want to talk to the younger generation because I want to say something my uncle told me years ago sitting at the dinner table in Weymouth, and he wasn't my biological uncle. I'll tell you this. I have my mud family, and I have my blood family. And um, my mud family is just closer because we were in the mud. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, now, I lived in a foster home. My last foster home before I got adopted was in Weymouth, Mass. It was in North Weymouth, a great area. And, um, you know... I met my best friend in first grade, uh, first, second grade, whatever, like elementary. And uh, he lived up the street. And his his uncle uh, was an addict. And throughout my life, I'd get in trouble. I was getting in fights. And, you know, the foster home was like, we don't want to put him back in the Italian home and the home flu and wanderers again. We want to help him, but he's just crazy. <laughs> right. So let me stop you for a second. Why did you want to come up here today and tell, tell your story? I just want to let these kids know, man, that pain is pain and you're going to go through it, man. And you don't have to turn to the drugs and the booze. I'm, I don't even smoke cigarettes anymore. I'm doing these. <laughs> these are pretty good. You know, you don't even have to do these. I'm just saying, like, you, you don't have to go down that route. You don't because, like I was saying, my uncle told me, I just want to save you 20 years of pain. Mm -hmm. And now 20 years later, I'm like, I went through all that shit when I didn't have to. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to. And um, even though I felt funny in those towns and all that stuff, and I ended up going to DYS very young, and it was, wasn't the towns, it wasn't the people, it was me. How were you as a student in these schools? You're bouncing around city to city, you gotta meet new people. <sighs> you already sucked. got, you know, with the whole adopted, and it, it, you got it, a lot on your plate for sucked, a young kid. It sucked, bro, because it, eventually what happened, they put me in a school, and, you know, God bless his school. It's called Social Collaborative. It's in, it's in Hingham, so I still got to play football for Hingham High. They just couldn't stand me. I was in so many program, 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 program. They were like, we're just going to find one school, so no matter where you're at, you can go. And, um, you know, so I had an IEP. Uh, everybody, see, here's the thing. They gave out. Everyone was like, uh, got diagnosed ADD. Remember mm. that, like that, like certain time. Everyone's yeah, like yeah. ADHD, ADD. They're giving kids Adderall in eighth grade. They diagnosed me with Asperger's. I don't believe I have it. I don't think I do, but technically, you know, on paper I do. But I, I don't. I mean, to explain that to me. I, uh, Asperger's I know a bit vaguely, just a, Asperger's just a mild form of autism. Okay. That's all it is, and it's like some people have it to like serious where. They can't um, talk. They're nonverbal. Some people, um, it's just like, it can be on, they call it the spectrum because it can be on different, yeah. you know, and I don't even want to put that out there. I'm just saying that for the people that have a bit of it that, you know, a lot of people joke about. It's really even not funny. Yeah. And, um, you know. Well, there's it, a lot of ignorance out there. Yeah, man. There really Absolutely. is. So I don't tell many people, but, you know, my, my life's an open book. I got a YouTube channel now, too. So it's all positive. Like, the negative shit's always going to be there. The streets are going to be the streets. Yeah. It, that's never going to change. Um, I'm just trying to do something different. Absolutely. I want to do something different. And, uh, like, you know, 
I'll tell you this, my mom, like growing up, my mother had a problem, man. And so I had to get adopted. It wasn't safe. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't comprehend that. And so what I thought was normal wasn't normal. Yeah. And like when even when I was a, when I got adopted, I would go be like, oh, I'm going to shovel for the weekend and stay at my buddy Keithy's house. I was on the train to Chelsea or Southie or wherever my mother was living. What about it, the father situation? So my father's one of the two tattoos I have. My biological father hung himself in the Dedham, the old Dedham jail on accident. It's kind of a long story, but he was back then. They didn't give a f about meds. Right. You come in dope sick, you were dope sick. Yeah. They didn't care about what you got going on. So he tried to pull a move mm. and it didn't go. He was 6'4". He was big. His cellmate said that he slipped and they just couldn't eat. He, he, so he couldn't yeah. get it off. Wow. And um, dude, just hearing that young, I went through it. How, how old were you? Halloween 97. Okay. Halloween 97. Did that have an effect on your mom that you noticed? I would imagine. Yeah. And it all trickles down. <clears throat> it does. It's, it's just pain, lot. dude. Yeah. It sucks because, it, you know, I, I don't try to come on here and be no good. bitch, too. But it's like she couldn't handle it. And I couldn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, like, my last memory of him, he was, in the, he was in the back of the cop car. I'm waving to him. And I'm like, why the fuck ain't he waving back? Right. You know what I mean? Not knowing he's cuffed. And you know what I'm saying? Like, it fucked yeah. me up, dude. Yeah. That's and the only reason I'm up here telling this story is so these kids can know, dude, you're going to go through some shit, man. But it's okay. It is you're okay. going to be fine. Mm -hmm. I'm fine now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little pain. I go through some pain because of this shit. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and I'll be honest, man. I took my pain out on people I didn't even freaking deserve it sometimes. Straight up, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, it's, just, it's just how it is, bro. Um, when do you start getting in trouble with the law? Like getting arrested. Oh, man. I'll be Catching real, cases. dude. I went to DYS in the year of 2000. I was 12 years old. Okay. I was so young that it was in Howland, uh, Goss. Uh, not Goss. So, like, it's Taunton. Taunton. Taunton Been State, State Grounds. Yeah. So, Goss is where you're committed, and uh, to Howland is where they just hold you. And they, I was so young, they put me on a mattress outside of the set, the rooms. Wow. And um, so, I was like, you know, I was, so they put me there to give me a little shock therapy for like a week. And then that was at two, year 2000. So, I'm born in 89. So, so I, I was, you know, 12, 12 years old. So how you, what's your mindset when you get out? You're 12 years old. Are you thinking like, this uh, makes me like kind of tough? Or are you thinking like, I don't want to get in trouble no more? I just held it in. Mm -hmm. I held it in. And because the people around there, that shit didn't impress them. What impressed them was fucking, Ab excuse my language, was Abercrombie and all, th all that, all that shit. In that these towns that you were. Yeah. And so like, I, you know, and, and so I tried not to even really... Did you I feel like not, a, sorry I was, to interrupt yeah, you. Like, sorry. Did you feel like an outsider? Yeah, you man, did? I did. I did. And I did feel like. How did you deal with that? Um, did you try to make friends? Were you a loner? Did I took it out of football, sports, man. Okay, and then the friends. positive. The friends that I knew, like we, you know, we did some crazy shit. Yeah. And, and, and it was all like petty stuff. But like I put my energy into, honestly, I laughed about shit. I probably shouldn't have. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I had a laugh because. Well, if you're coping. Yeah, too, that was my, man. you know, that was my thing. And I coping just learned mechanism. not to tell people things because I don't want handouts and you to, f I'm not going to be no charity case. You just want to feel normal. I want to just be normal, dude. Sometimes I needed a hand up, but yeah. not a, I don't want a hand up because it's just like, I'm still a man, man. Yeah, don't you know give me saying? a fish, show me how to fish. I need to, yeah. like, without having that man, the father figure, any positive male that is going to, quote, unquote, teach you how to fish instead of giving you. Like, the government's just going to give you a fish, yeah. right? Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. They'll never teach you how to fish for yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that that's important. Who were some of the people that you were kind of looking up to at, as role models at, at a young age? Maybe teachers or something? Was there any positive no, I, influence? Yeah, yeah, no, there was. Like, um, like I said, it was a lot of sports. And what would happen was, so... The, like the first foster homes and places I was in, um, like I was in the Italian home and then they changed the name to the Little Wanderers because of being sued for so many...
little assault cases up there, deaths. Wow. You know what I mean? It was a shitty. It was a shitty place. Like one name was the Bears, one was the Lions, and before like I got taken away for good, I was there like every year for six yeah. months. I'd be like, "F this place." At one time, they go, "You want to go to the Celtics game or call your mother?" I go, "I want to call my mother." What do you mean? Mm. Like, it's just the place sucked, and it still sucks. F you, by the way. Yeah. Um. And uh. So yeah, just it was. It was what it was. But like, it, like who I looked up to was just. Coaches and stuff. It wasn't, you know, that's where I took out my anger, but I looked up to the wrong. I wanted to be where my mother was. And I'm so, and it sounds ungrateful because I was adopted. I locked out. Some kids don't get adopted. Yeah. Some kids are in freaking programs till they're 18. Yeah. Or um, end up in DYS till oh, they're 18. Me too. And I got committed you know? early. <laughs> yeah. I got committed early. So some of the kids, I'll tell you this, some of the kids I looked up to were like kids are doing the smoking weed and shit. That was the thing. It was taboo then. Yeah. Now it's cigarettes a taboo. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's yeah. why I, like, I bang these out. Yeah. And, and so anyway, where I was getting with that, I was like, so one of the kids, like I thought we were really close. Now we ended up in DYS together. We got committed on the same day. I'm not even going to say his name. Co-defendants or just no, he just okay. You know, like, because uh, the courthouse we were going to didn't have, like, they just put everyone together, like, hey, all juveniles this day, whatever. And we got committed the same day. So I'll never forget, we, we, we're committed. We're in the cell downstairs and, uh, I'm like, well, at least I'm going with somebody that I know. You know what I mean? It's from Hingham, whatever. Like, you know, now we get in there and we go to the Brockton Y first. This is when we're committed now. And it's a different game there. Like, mm -hmm. it's DYS is like the whole thing in Holland. Then when you're committed, it's just different. Mm -hmm. And we went in together and I'll never forget this. He was like, I was telling people he was my cousin. Right? So like the next day, so we're like together. So the yeah. next day he pulls me, we're doing hygiene and he's like, you telling people I'm your cousin? I'm like, yeah, I do. Like, why don't we to get, like, he's like, don't do that. I go, whatever. Okay. We stopped talking. Mm. Hey, two days later, he gets fucking slapped. I look at him. I just looked at him like, like, hey, if you move, I'll move. But still, I still would have. Yeah. He didn't do nothing. I didn't talk to him the rest of the time. Yeah. Didn't even talk to him. I mean, like, my whole theory on that is, like, you know, unless it's certain people, but it's like, I'll fight with you. I'm not fighting yeah. for you. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You got Yeah, no, you no. Know? You want to come in and be a victim. But, like, I was so hurt because I thought this was my buddy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I thought he was my buddy. So Is that a reality check when somebody time. that you think is your friend, you probably think of, not highly, highly of him, but hold him up to a higher standard to probably think think that if he gets slapped, he's going to fight back was that a big well you know what i was it was disappointing that he didn't fight but it was i was more like good mm. like like i would have like that, for oh, that pettiness yeah you yeah. wanted to do that like because like the day before i'm so petty right hey we play <laughs> we're playing dodgeball i go dude what do we do like he goes i go i don't even know how to play he's like that sucks mm. like that like just really yeah, ignorant yeah, yeah. and i was waiting for his little snobby attitude and he caught a beer paw boom mm. And I was like, huh? Like, damn, that's what you get. Yeah. So and, what's that experience like? Uh, you go to Procton, why? You stay there the whole time while you're committed? Uh, or no. Or do you get so, to see classification kind of deal? Yeah. Or whatever so it's called? You start at the third floor. You go to the fourth floor and you get assessed. So well, they were like, I is. need long-term uh, treatment. So mm. they sent me to Braintree, Pilgrim Center. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was there probably like two months. I got in a couple fights. I was in trouble. They found out about it because I had a job. I'm in the back taking snipes out of the fucking <laughs> the mm. thing. Excuse my language. And then, uh, you know, I was gone. You saw fast feet and ass cheeks. I was gone. I ran with a kid from Brockton a kid from uh, Quincy and me, we walked all the way to Brockton from Braintree. So what kind of, is it more like a walk away? Did you have, a cl have to climb a barbed wire fence? No, we would just like, we like put on a place was it? Did we you, put on, a, it was, it's, it's really just a house in Braintree. So it's not a secure. No, copy. we just hit the back room and we all had brand new air forces. I'll never forget. And we went right through a swamp, like a, like just what up to here, not swamp, like, mm -hmm. you know, mud ruined. Yeah. And, uh, it's crazy. So we get all the way to Brockton. His name's Deshaun Wu, and I hope he sees this. Deshaun, I hope you're doing good too, man. I met your brother, by the way. And uh, so, you know, Deshaun's brother pulls up, and he's like, yo, come on, jump in. He's like, I got these guys with me. He just looked, and he's like, looked at me like, I got to go. Mm -hmm, so now mm -hmm. we're in Brockton. We're nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah. And now, uh, so we find our way to West Quincy, 
And um, it was just he went his way, and I went into downtown Boston. Okay. And I and the reason I'll tell you this to this day, the reason I do the tour guide stuff is because I would look rain, sleet, hail, snow. Who was getting money on seven days a week? And it was the people doing the Freedom Trail, people doing tour guides. They were out there all day, and the other people that were there every day were tourists. And our tourists. city has great, great history, man. Mm -hmm. And people don't even know. Yeah. They just come here and want to go to friggin' Newberry Street or right, right. Presidential, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, and I, I offer all that. Just real quick, I offer the Wine and Dine, which is in North End and Hay Market. I offer the Mall Crawl, which is uh, Copley, Presidential, Newberry Street, if you want, or even Quincy Market, whatever. And I offer, did I say the Wine and Dine yet? Dude, that was the first one. Okay, Wine and Dine, Mall Crawl, and um, there was the third one. Damn it, my bad, this is going to F me up. It's all right, we can uh, edit it. <laughs> okay, yeah. Fuck, what was it called? Um, well, the, oh, excuse me. The rail trail, okay. not the freedom trail. We, we, the listen, that's, trail. that's so run it back from the beginning. The <coughs> wine and dine, you say wine and dine, mall crawl, and the real trail. Okay. And that's the real trail is like up the commons. Okay. So you know, I show them like, and it's like, you know, and and the Irish have a lot of heritage. You know, uh, just even speaking on war. You know, so that was me the meeting the house. The rail trail. Why? The, well, well, we start at the North Church Meeting House, which is where you know. I mean, we have to, people, a lot of people don't even know what the Boston Tea Party was about and about, you know, no taxation without representation. That started here. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, like, I just, you know, I, I go out and I take these people out and, wow. you know, I show them, you know, different spots, different statues, what they mean to me yeah. and what they might mean to the city. So when did you start to get interested in this history was it at school or was it years later reading it was years maybe later like you something? know it was just something like i put together that off just a hope and a dream because i'll tell you this anything going down in the commons yeah. now like i i would scalp a little bit on the low but i just didn't i was always in a jail in yeah, jail yeah. so i didn't have enough time to like Build get, be official no just to be official okay. because you can't just be down there and just selling tickets you you get checked real quick mm -hmm. my cousins now like my mother's one of 13 all from south boston so all my cousins were kind of into that and stuff okay. and I just didn't have um I just wasn't out there with them so like I would do it on the low with them and it was pretty good money okay. now there's none of that so how does it go you're on the run you get okay. to downtown Boston well, what ends up happening do you end up getting caught how long are you on the run for what I was you... on the run for 11 months and that 11 months taught me what life was and okay. uh not having nothing nothing and um I lived better in DYS mm -hmm. now at this time prior to this my mother had done some time and you know we went to court and they offered her two in a day in south bay and she's already had six months in so it was 18 months it was mandatory they go or oh, you start making some phone calls and she wasn't gonna do that my mm -hmm. mother was no rap mm -hmm. and so she ended up doing she walked and i took her jewelry at 14 she went in and uh did her time now back to the run thing there was a reason why i was getting back to that but oh so now while i'm on the run you know, um, there's missing flyers out for me mm. in Quincy and stuff like that. And um, I'll just give you this. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about weirdos. I learned a lot about why people say there's nothing good after 12 at night. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned just like who, like there's like different types of people. That's why people on the stand the streets, you don't have time to see white. It, that's the media. You don't have time to see white, black. You have to see real, fake, rich, poor, threat. Mm. Evil. Right? Evil, <laughs> not a threat. Yeah. A dude's had to do you dirty and just do you dirty and just leave you there. Mm -hmm. Them type of people, like, you know what I mean? It's all about survival. So you don't have time to be, like, you yeah, know. It's not that easy. Like, okay, can't, we, I can trust all of these guys and not all. Yeah. It don't no, work like that. It don't work like that, man. You Absolutely. either, you, you know, I used to tell this expression a lot and go over people's heads because it went over mine when I first heard it. Realize, can mm -hmm. always realize, realize. realize yeah. And, um, you know, I, I heard that a poker table in the Bay one time. I just, and it just stuck with me. And I was like, in my cell trying to comprehend. And I was like, I got it. I was like, because <laughs> it, it went over my head. He said it so quick. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> but, how does it come to a head on the run? Okay, so. You turn so, yourself in eventually? No, I was, uh, you know, unfortunately, I've never done that. But he, I was on the run uh, from DYS. And so my adoptive father, Reverend Mike, Pastor Mike's putting out flyers. And one of the guys saw, he saw that I was always just down there. The night they found me, it was so cold out. I was sleeping next to a guy who already passed away. Wow. He was already dead. Mm 
They pulled up, like the old um, the old downtown was a completely different setup. You could literally pull a car and they had black benches around where Macy's was. Mm -hmm. And it was like, um, it was you know, it just was a different place than that yeah. than it is today. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's what happened, man. So he, he literally, um, he literally, you know, brought me, he's like, they, they were physically holding me down, not letting me out of the van. And then they pulled over construction cops said, please call the police. Mm. And uh, man, I needed it. It was yeah. like, I got rescued, man. Yeah. Cause I probably wouldn't have made it to winter. I was just showing defiance. Yeah. It really, once again, it was me. It was me. Well, that's big to accept that because a lot of people are always pointing the finger away from themselves when yeah. it's really the mirror they need to look at. Yeah, man. Is it back to the Brockton Y? What's, what's that uh, next yeah, experience? Actually, Is oh, that... Jesus. So I get grabbed. They go, we're going to give you 11 months total, uh, six months on the fifth floor, and then you're going to do five months at Pilgrim Center, another five to eight after you do six months on the fifth floor. And I'm like, oh, here we go, dude. Mm -hmm. And that, that bit there is when I was fighting a lot, and I was just fucking... What do you fight? Are you just angry? Are angry, you, are you... angry. I'm sick of the staff. I'm, I, you know, I'm getting restrained. I'm humming chairs. Mm -hmm. I'm just... I, I'm just sick of it, man. Was there like, a lot of uh, gang violence oh going my on at that God. time? Because I've never that, been to the Bronx. They would one. let you. They got so sick of people fighting like and getting in trouble for it and having to write them up that they would just bring you in the laundry room, let you air out, and it was over. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were from the hood. A lot of them from Brockton. Yeah. You know? And um, uh, so what happened on that one night, and so instead I ended up going, to, instead of Pilgrim Center, they're like, no, we're not taking him back. So after the six months, they sent me to uh, the Fanoff Center. In, on Market Street in Brockton. I was there like two weeks. I said, I'm out of here. Now, <laughs> to get out, you have to hit the door and hold it for three seconds. Mm. I thought you just hit it and go. <laughs> but they take your clothes at night, so I was only in my boxes. I hit the I hit the thing, and it didn't open. I just ran upstairs. I jumped in bed like nothing happened. They go, the black lady, I she goes, that, that's him right there. That's him. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you got me. So I was out the next day. I was back to the Y, mm. and um, I ended up doing the rest of my time there on the third floor this time. So I wrap up now, at this point, my adoptive parents are living in New Hampshire. Cause you know, the, and here's another thing why I get mad at the whole God shit. Cause I saw how the church treated him as a, as a, as a senior pastor, he was treated like crap. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, you know, mostly cause he liked Trump. Uh, that was at the end when he really started getting treated like crap. And he put it on his scooter and everything. He had, he had no he had pride, man. He I, he's not only someone I love and respected. I liked him. Yeah. He he took no shit from no one. You know, even as a minister, he still didn't take nothing from no one. So did, a, did you follow them to New Hampshire though? I Is did. That, okay. And I and did. You're not, still committed. I'm still committed. I, I lasted up there maybe like dude like three months. What not happened? even. Um, I was going to school up there. Uh, I do. They have me in like an eighth grade cr class. I was supposed to be. Uh, I was supposed to be in like like tenth grade by then or something like that. It had me in like no no excuse me. They had me on a freshman class. Mm. I was supposed to be in like tenth or eleventh grade. I've already done I'm almost age. Like, I mean, like does that stuff talk, make you feel bad about yourself or you start to horrible question? horrible? Because yeah. they're like, why is this kid in here? Where is mm. he from? Like New Hampshire, where I was staying was in Concord. It's just a whole different mm. vibe than it's not even far away. It's just a different. Yeah. They don't dress like us. They don't talk like this. I was always embarrassed mm -hmm. about my accent. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was trying to hide it. Like, oh, yeah. and they're like, well, what's the T? What's that? Like, they were just like, I was just like, you know, and so back again, my anger, just getting in trouble, getting in fights. And uh, I got caught with some pot and uh, they fucking sent me right back to DYS and one shot, bang. Now I go to Goss mm -hmm. and Goss was popping too. Goss mm -hmm. was popping. And, uh, you know, it just was a place that, like, when you came in, the dudes would just call you a bitch just to see where your hands are at. Mm, check your heart. You just check you, just to, just yeah. to see where you were at. And I'll never forget a kid I fought, like, three times. I never won once. And mm -hmm. uh, his name was Dante Hood. And when they did that big Annie Dukin thing, mm -hmm. they let him out for a big bid, and he ended up catching a murder case broad daylight. Don't he only got, like, 15 years for it, whatever. He should be out by now. But, but I just remember, like, seeing people. Every time I looked on the news, as I'm getting older, I'm like, wow, he's dead. Mm -hmm. He's dead. He caught a life sentence. He's gone. And, I mean, I felt like I had a friggin' army around me at one point in my life. And, yeah. Do you ever feel lucky to be the one that's still here talking <laughs> well, these about it? These, man, that's why I want to I want to shoot some real shit yeah. at these people because you don't have to do it, man. Yeah. Like, we've done it. Bobby, you've done it. Yeah, We've done it. it. Me and your cousin did it. Me and Nikki did it. Me and, like, Keithy. Mm -hmm. Keithy, like, uh, Justin. All the, like, I, I know and did time with probably 60% of your, your crowd that you've had on here. Yeah. It's small. And, I mean, it's, that's we, the small. The prison system's even smaller, too. So, yeah. Yep, yeah. Absolutely. And it's just, like, 
I just want to give people some hope, man. Like, you know, I, I showed a little emotion just now. That's just real shit coming out of me. I feel better even. Yeah. Let it out, man. Go hit the bag. Hell go. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, you don't need to go go beat people up, especially no. people that don't deserve it. Let people live. Yep. Let people live. Let them want to do their thing. Let them do their thing, man. Well, we got to be adults and be able to manage our emotions and our anger and yeah. not take it out on people who, like, don't deserve it. Yeah. Even the people that you think may deserve it, it's really not worth the consequences that come with that. Yeah. So let's get back to gossip. Are you there now until you age out? Okay. Pretty much, or well, this would happen. My mother, my mother. I'll tell you this: if I had half her hustle, I'd be rich. Mm. She got me into a place called MAP, a Moving Ahead program, and it was in it was at the St. Francis House on Boylston Street. For anyone that's been in the streets of Boston, they know St. Francis House. It's in Chinatown, and I lived in Roxbury at a place called Safe Haven. Dave Perry owned it. He changed it mad times, the name, because he kept getting sued and all types of stuff. When the cameras would come, I was 17. I had to hide. I'd have to leave. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was in uh, Roxbury. So this is now I'm getting really introduced to the heart of Boston. At 17, I was living there, and I had a blast. I had a friggin' blast. But my mother was living right up the street from here at the YMCA, and um, the woman's wine, it was like a shit room. She just got out of the bay. Um, from that, remember I told you the story. I gave mm-hmm. back the jewelry, all that stuff. So now she's at, she's she's living there. She has her housing. I'm 17. I'm going. I'm doing the program in Boston. She's got her housing, but she needs, you know, some security deposit. Boom. So I got in the streets. I got it. Mm-hmm. We got the place right down the street, Inman Square Apartments, 1024, 10th floor. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Um, and uh, but I was selling drugs, man. Yeah. I was selling drugs, and uh, it just. You know, and the addict, and you know, I'll be honest, my mother was an addict, man. It just did not work out. Yeah. And I didn't even know for like she like a long time. I was just making money and like thinking like I'm doing, you know, the right thing. Yeah. Thinking what's normal, but it's not normal. I got a I, I looked like a squirrel. I got twenties in my mouth so big on each side. I'm just like boom, 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 give me ten. Here, take right. it, take it, take it. So at what point does that become part of your story where you start Doing drugs. Is this the whole time ever since high school? Uh, well, I smoked. I used to be a huge stoner. I was okay. a huge pothead. And, uh, I, you know, drinking was my thing. And then, like, you know, I like to do some bumps. You gotcha. know, I like to do some lines and stuff. Just, uh, it, it's whatever it is with me. It just, it can't be enough. So, like, I just can't do it. Yeah. I just, just, I'm done with the game because okay. there's no winning it. Okay, so mom's yep so mom's she's, was in the bay pops yeah, you know locked gone. up at one point but yep. still he's he's gone rest in peace but he went to jail you know what yeah I mean? so it's almost like an inevitable you already doing the dys thing yeah adult jail is going to be part of your story i yeah. mean how long until that happens 17 man i went to uh nash i sat in nash for like four months um i got out and then i caught a big case in 2000 2009 or 10 i caught a pretty big case um jesus christ and um and um so so just talk about that first time in nashua street first time in adult jail you know dys is one thing now you're talking about like you said getting introduced to boston boston yeah it just sucked man because i felt like out of place i was nervous i was out of place i just was just i was scared man i was ready to to move because i'm like i want to get out of the way to show people that i'm not scared so Mm -hmm. every little thing i was kind of show people or to show yourself too show myself too like Mm -hmm. you can do this like this is this is what you signed up you did the crime motherfucker like so i was like just you know i was trying to prove myself but that was it was so like in and out and like every time we'd come out something would pop off it'd be like a five on one you know how boston gets down man they don't play in there Mm -hmm. you know the kids got beef with different hoods so you know i spent a lot of that lockdown Mm -hmm. and actually my cellmate at that time didn't even speak english and Mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time together (laughs) but anyway moving on is how i met your cousin my first sentence Mm -hmm. was at bill ricker that's where I met all the fellas that mm-hmm. I consider the fellas because I did, all, like, this bid was two years, and then I took one of the cases to trial, and I got an 18-month on and after. Mm. So um, it just was ugly, man. It just was ugly. And uh, But I met your cousin, a mm-hmm. new man, actually. Mm-hmm. I met uh, Nikki, a new man. I met Justin, a new man. Just that, that my first real bid. Yeah. That's my first real bid. And, um, you know, and it was just like, it, I just closed my mouth. Man, and Justin didn't give me, and, and your cousin didn't give me like hot top. Like this is what you do. Yeah. You just followed the rail. Mm. The rail, like you'll see it when you come on a unit. The rail is with the rail. The weirdos are with the weirdos. The gamblers are with the game. Like you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying like people don't talk, but it's just you see who's who. Mm-hmm. And I just, 
hung and, with the good well, crowd. And, and Bill Ricker, Middlesex is a little different than Nashua Street. Where you say you, yeah. you felt like an outside. Did, how did you feel in Middlesex? Did you fit well, in Well, I was more? sentenced. I fit in more in, and, I, you know, I, I did because, like, p- people were a little more out. They weren't just trying to fight you all the damn time. Like, it was mm-hmm. just like, and, and what Boston's known for, we're known for these. Mm-hmm. We're known for these. Like, like people don't understand. A lot of people don't understand that. We're, we're a fighting, we're a squaring up and getting it type of city. Mm-hmm. Um, and anyway, but um, yeah, that's what it, so like, it was almost a little more relaxed. Like, you got pancakes. They called it the house of pancakes. pancakes. You got pancakes in the morning. And this is the new, um, this is the new jail, the pods and stuff. I started at D pod was new man with your cousin and with, um, all them. And then I got, I asked to go behind the wall. They're like, well, you're young. There's a guy's back. There were a lot of serious charges. They get in a lot. So, you know, I go, yeah, that's where I want to be. <laughs> They're like, no, we're sending you to the drug unit. So I go to the drug unit and, um, Nikki was in the cell next to me. R.I.P. And, uh, and I had a kid that I was in D.Y.S. with from Eastie. He was repping Chelsea at the time. His name was Jeffrey. Jack, I'm all Jack, spelled Jack. I mean, R.I.P. Um, another kid was a good friend of mine. And we end up cellmates. And we end up getting kicked off of that unit. I'll tell you, if you ask me after this, I'll tell you about him. But about how he passed away. It's just really sad. Anyhow, that was my dog. And fucking next thing you know, I'm on, uh, I get sent to where I wanted to go, which was the tears behind the wall. Mm-hmm. I get back there, Justin's back there. Uh, everyone was back there that you could, that does time back there. It's just a different environment. You're in a single cell and the hole is right there. So when you get in trouble, you go there and just come right back. Mm-hmm. And I did that for um, friggin' maybe 18 months of that bid, like just over there. And then they closed it down. They closed to like repaint it. And then I ended up going to uh, C-Pod uh, that's actually where I met Bundy, and then that's where, like, you know, and Keithy, I, Keithy, I met behind the wall too. Mm-hmm. Uh, real quick, Keithy was one of your first people on I was here. At war with them cops. Call they the fucked me all up too. <laughs> Fuck them. But yo, call, okay, call me a punk. You weren't expecting that, huh? No. Went down like a fucking stone cold bitch. Didn't even hit back. Was fucking it a, cow. Uh, Was he a young big guy? Big ass dude. Young? Nah, he was a big ass dude. He had a big lip in his mouth. Thought he was on top one of them seals. Mm. I fucking punk. <laughs> Bang! I think you punk. How about Keithy, that? Love you, buddy, and I appreciate what you're doing for me. And uh. He's, you know, he's helped me out a lot. And, like, he's another one that I kind of just watched and listened to because he was a big dog in there, too. Yeah. And we were playing basketball. He broke my shoulder playing mm-hmm. basketball. So we, he always has incidents with basketball. So the second time, he's got three days left. He'll tell you the story. And he's wrestling with this kid, Nikki Ellis, from in there, wrestling over the ball. And the cop, like, he got, he got nasty with Keith. And Keith starts going after the cop. I'm like, I'm not, I'll take a beat. And I'm not letting you hit a uh, cop with a fucking weak left dose, yeah. in my language. And I grabbed him up. And, uh, you know, and then they all ran in. The cop hit the button. They all run in. They see, they see it's him. He's like this. They're like, we'll let you walk out of here. That's one of the few times I've ever seen that. <laughs> but that was my buddy, man. It's always been my buddy. My mother loved Keithy. My mother yeah. was very close to him. He was at my mother's celebration of life. She was very close to him because she knew he was a brother to me. And he is still a brother to me. We fight like brothers. <laughs> like, he is my brother, man. That's why I say it. I got my mud family and my blood yeah. family. So this is a lot more time than your four months. In oh, Do you start sucked. doing any self-reflection, any self-work? Um, you know what? I'll tell you this, I got, I had an incident, my shoulder, everything I did, handball, fight, or if it, whatever, even put, I, my shoulder would pop out of place. So I ended up, the night before, I had an incident where I ended up getting sprayed and maced, and I, they tell, tell me to take a shower, I think I'm getting shipped out, mm-hmm. I get, the, the mace reacts again, I'm like, home alone, remember home alone? Mm-hmm. Ah! Yep. The, the mace reacts again, I go to, I go to the shattuck, they tighten up my, my shoulder, and I couldn't do any real exercise, so I started doing legs, man. Mm-hmm. And I would just do legs, Roman chair, squats, and uh, and um, just anything legs, anything. And it was every other day I'd do them, and I got in the best shape of my life with just doing legs. Mm-hmm. When I finally could use my, my arms, I just started doing push-ups, and I left in two, I wrapped that bed up in two, June 2013, and I was in great shape, man. What was your plan? Uh, did you formulate a plan for upon your release? I'll did tell you this. What I did was I got the Vivitrol shot. Okay. I got the Vivitrol shot. So explain that for people. Vivitrol who may shot not know. is it's a needle you get in your ass that it makes it so you can't if you take perks or uh, any opiate or any alcohol it won't uh, you won't feel it you mm-hmm. just get deathly sick. How often do you need that? Once a month. Once a month. Now I'll be honest. I got it that once and I didn't go back. Man, I was kind of I, I was they, in the streets. They again. gave that to you. 
on the inside before you got yeah, out? Yeah, actually, like two days before I wrapped up, they gave it to me. Work release, CWP? Or Never made it. Okay. Yeah, wait, I, I wrapped up behind the wall. I just couldn't stop. No just, money. Uh, you know, Same you know what? I well. always did okay because, you know, I did some, you know, and the people that will, will see this will laugh because me and a buddy of mine who was mentioned from Justin named Beatty, Sean Beatty, uh, Beats, I hope you're all right out there. I mean, if you see this, buddy, give me a call. I love you, kid. Um, uh, he's from Old Colony. He's a great, great kid. And Beatty, uh, we did the book. And mm -hmm. he played poker like a maniac, but I, I didn't know how to play. So I just, we just split the book for football. Okay. Uh, you know, Southie guys got, you know, I ran with the Southie crowd. We, we sat at the Southie table. Somerville was here. Somerville did uh, basketball and baseball. We did hockey and football. And so that's who, you know, that's who I ran with. And mm -hmm. so, you know, and it was like kind of a shit show, but we made a lot of money. Mm, and okay. uh well, so you well, left with you had a little bit of money i had a little pocket. bit of money stacked up man yeah not 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 a whole lot but enough to kind of get on my feet mm -hmm. you know clothes stuff like that um and another thing if guys are just getting out man go to atr mm -hmm. go to it's called access to recovery i know there's one in south boston i don't know if it's still there but i know there's one in uh Cambridge, like oh, right no. here. This it's either Cambridge or Somerville. I know there's one right around here. So you know, what my, kind of things do they provide? Uh, they give you a check for clothes, for phone, and then they can just they have so many things. You just gotta ask though. Yeah. Closed mouth doesn't get fed. You gotta ask. That's why these places are there. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know. So yeah, so man. What ends up happening? Did you get out? Are you doing the right thing? Do you start to no? Fall I'm in the off? streets, man. Right I'm away. The, right away. I'm in the streets. It just uh. You know, and I'm not blaming anybody. Mm -hmm. It was me, man. But like, you know, my mother was on drugs and I felt like I had to be her pit bull mm -hmm. because just people go up there and just think they're going to do whatever they want and take advantage because she gets, she uses. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just, you know, things like that. And then like, it was, it was honestly too me because I needed a place to live. And like, I knew if I like came home with money and like, if I was, you know, if I was doing, if I was making money, I was, I had a place to go mm -hmm. instead of paying for a new apartment. And my mother was my best friend. Yeah. So like, you know, it was, you know, it, you know, and I think that's why I'm too emotional too. Because when you're raised around a woman, I think you get more emotional mm. because they act off emotion. Mm -hmm. And like, so I don't know. I'm just saying maybe that's why sometimes like I have trouble with that physical pain yeah. all day. Right. Don't, doesn't bother. I've had a million incidents and mm -hmm. it's just whatever. It is what it is. I'll heal up. I'll lick my wounds. Mm -hmm. I'll be fine. But when it comes to mental shit, when it comes to emotional, I, I, I'm like, I'm ravaged, man. Yeah. I'm ravaged. Like I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm like a beat down dog. Damn. So eventually, how long does that last? Uh, with my mother, uh, just, so you're on, you know, you said you're running pretty much. Yeah, you know, so not doing the right thing. Does, so now 2017. So um, shit, where do we go from there? Uh, I think I gave it one more shot to go live with my adoptive family in New Hampshire. So I, you got clean and you no, to, I didn't get clean. I okay, went up there. I went up there and then got clean. I you know I okay. kicked on his couch and was that the plan for when you went up there? Then? Yeah, okay. yeah. And um, <laughs> so man. just what's that experience like, man? Just Being you know, sick and, and all that. how miserable is it, man? You know, well, you bring you you bring what you think you're gonna have to be fine, and it's never enough, dude. You just it's like it's over, it's done, and you just need to buckle up because yeah. it's you, you're going up a roller coaster and you're gonna come down, yeah. and it's gonna hurt. And, yeah. and just like my uncle used to tell me, he goes cold turkey's coming, buddy. Mm -hmm. There's no like there's no he he ha ha. In this so it's game. like a flu flu type of deal. Um, you're throwing up. What, what kind well, of things? back then it was not hard. no sleep. At all? No, 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 no. I mean, no. That's now, back then it was heroin, and mm -hmm. I was sniffing heroin, and you know, I don't even like admitting that shit on. But hey, I want to just tell people where that's what I was at. I mean, um, a lot of people that's not what they do, mm -hmm. and, and like people think, oh, I just do perks, I just do perkies, I'm better, dude. All it is is fentanyl now anyway, so you know, you're not, you're not no better. Like right, you know what right, I mean? Right. Like, but yeah, I was on straight heroin, man. You just. Man, I got into a fight one time and, and I shit my pants because wow. I had like you always have the runs, mm. you know. Uh, only thing I can say is like there was just nothing good about it. There was nothing that came out of me. I was suppressing issues that eventually, what happened was it just came up to the top again like a tornado, oh, and yeah. then I was back where I started. Right, because the you know the using is just. There's an underlying issue. So you yeah. get rid of the use and the underlying issue is still there. Yeah. I mean, you get clean. Do you start to deal with those underlying issues? Do you start to do therapy or do you start to do the right thing up there? Um, you know what? I, 
No, no. I Not just, for long? So no, you, but you did... Well, I'll tell you, this is what happened. You did get, like, sick and then get I, I did good for a bit. I was going to a charter school up there. And mm-hmm. uh, so I was trying to, like, you know, I don't know what it was. I was trying to just, like, do something positive. And, uh, you know, I was working with his... He had a thing called Rise Again Outreach, which they probably still got. It's in the church he was last at in New Hampshire. Now, um... What that was, was he would go, like, people would give away furniture, and then they'd be like, I, I have nowhere to put it, but it's nice stuff. Do you want it? And he would take old storage lockers and put them in there. So when someone needed furniture, hey, yeah, come on down. And he had two trucks, and nice. we'd load it up, and then I kind of put a lot of work into that with him. Because, we, you know, I learned a lot from him. Yeah. You know, he was very conservative, very right-wing. Uh, listen to Howie Carr every day in the car, mm-hmm. like very like old school Irish, just good, great person, man. Okay, just great person. And um, yeah, where were we? Well, so I forgot. My bad. You end up using again. I end up using again. Yep. And then what happened? Do you end up getting in more trouble with the law? Yeah. So oh, actually, that's when I caught the New Hampshire case, man. I uh, now Naomi, his wife, would once in a while on the low let me use her car. And that night, I asked her. She said no. And I was like, well, she, she's not going to notice, mm-hmm. like an asshole. And I went, filled up the tank, so she had a full gas, and it's raining, and I'm on the highway. And, man, I'm, like, hitting, my phone's going off. I'm hitting ignore, hitting ignore, hitting ignore. And I, I hydroplaned, <laughs> smash right into a tree. And I saw the tree coming, dude. We smashed the cars like this. It looks like a, what are those saxophones? Looks like a saxophone, dude. I was like, oh. Accordion? Yeah, accordion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's all good though. <laughs> it's disgusting. This I is knew gross. What you meant. <laughs> yeah, you know what I meant. So, dude, I'm like, and uh, I'm like, oh my god! I woke up and I'm like, wow, I'm still alive. Holy shit! Yeah, well, New Hampshire don't play around either when no. it comes to breaking the law. No. So, you know, I knew I had warrants in Mass already. Mm-hmm. I was already in trouble down there. Oh. So what I did was I took, I had a bunch of Zanny bars. I tucked them up, and. Uh, you know, I threw away everything that was in the car. I walked to the top of the embankment. I knew something was wrong. All my ribs are broken. I'm like, ah, I had to climb out the sunroof. I get to the top of the embankment, and friggin', there's, the stadies are already there. And I tried walking by him like he'd never see me, like he wasn't there. I tried. Mm-hmm. He goes, oh, hi, how you doing? Mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, what's going on, man? He's like, hey, listen, uh, dude, what, what's do you, is that your car down there? I go, what car? All you hear is... From the windshield wipe. He's like, oh, no, no, no. What, you, what, what, what car? Yeah. He shines the light down there. He goes, that one. I'm like, oh, shit. I go, just call the fucking ambulance, dude. What's your name? I, I, not, you're getting nothing. Call the ambulance. <laughs> Called the ambulance, dude. I get to the hospital. This is kind of an effed up story, but I'm going to share it if it gets out of the door. It does. But, yeah. So we get to the hospital, and they're like doing x-rays on me. I'm still not giving them my name. Shout out to my boy. I won't say his name because it's my dog. Because, but I did use his name, and they found they pulled him up. He's like six four. He's got long hair, and that's my dog. But uh, he, uh, another kid's in second grade. Anyhow, they, um, they're like, it's not you. What's you? They give my real name, and um, now they go. They did all the tests on me, and they go, listen, your spleen is ruptured, your ribs are messed up, but we found something in your anus. I go, what? They go, do you got some type of anything in there? I go, no, 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 no. They go, let's just do one more check. They do it. I'm like, fuck. I got the Zanny bars up. I got like 70 of them. I'm like, oh, my God, right, dude? I'm like, no, no, no. They bring me back, and all the, all the state troopers come in. They go, well, if you don't take it out, we'll do it for you. I wrap my arms around the bed. I go, well, here we go. And then they bring in a lady. She's like, She's got like a fake boss. And I said, hey, honey, you got so much trouble. Just take them out and flush them in that toilet right there. And you'll be in no trouble. I promise. I'll close the doors. Mm. I'm like, you promise? She's like, and I was like, because what I got to lose at this point, right? Mm-hmm. They got, they, I'm going to be fighting anyway. So whatever. So mm-hmm. she goes, I promise. I take them out. As soon as she friggin' as op- soon as I took them out, the doors open. They rushed in and grabbed them. Mm-hmm. The thing popped like a pinata. I got like 14 of them down. I woke up about a week later, shackled to a Jeez. bed with a $50,000 bail. A week? So you were in the hospital for a week? I didn't even or? know where I was for a week. I didn't even know. My, I had to wake well, up. Well, the will do that to you. Yeah. I woke up for and sure. go, where am I? And what's my bail? Right. <laughs> You know? Yeah, no, but, I mean, it's it's scary, though, because yeah. you might wake up and think, man, you might have, did I yeah. off somebody? Yeah. Like, what am I facing? You yeah. don't know. You, it was scary. It was scary. So what happens from there? Do you get a rain? They bring you to the courthouse and arraign you? Yeah, well, I stay in the hospital for like a total of a month. They were this close to letting me go on the bracelet mm. because they didn't want to pay for a cop to sit by my bed because New Hampshire is not like us. They have sheriffs run the jail. Mm-hmm. So it's just a little different how, you know, so they don't want to pay a sheriff to be by my bed all day. Okay. So I was this close to getting out and it just 
didn't didn't crap and and so you know time was up they sent me to the rockingham county jail i sat there for uh like 17 months fighting the case and eventually the xanax got dropped because i'm like they're my meds i can sh stick them up my ass if i wanna <laughs> yeah okay. i can do whatever i want with my meds mm -hmm. so they dropped that and um they found a couple other little items and just uh they were like this okay you've done 15 months we're gonna give you a two to six suspended i'm like two to six what that's crazy dude two to six Suspe I've already done 15 months. Does it count? They go, well, it depends. The lady kind of fed me a bill of, like, a bill of goods. It just was bullshit. Mm. And uh, I was like, you know what? How about this? Two to four. Ask her. Ask them. She came back to go, all right, two to four, you leave right now. Mm -hmm. Sign. Boom. So what's that experience like New Hampshire? That's a little different. Oh, dude. Well, it just is completely different. Now, I'll tell you this. I I'll, I'll explain to it, and I'll get to the story, how I met my biological brother in jail up there i've never met i didn't know him since we were kids so what happened was i signed that paper get me out today paper 20 suspended whatever it says let me out i leave i go back to boston i'm on the run boom i catch another case now i'm in the hole in Billerica, um in moose you know lieutenant moose mm -hmm. he comes to my cell he goes matthews they would have been here by yesterday because they have till the morning they would have been here today i know new hampshire make a call if someone can come pick you up tomorrow, you can go home. If not, you know, we'll bring you to BMC, whatever court you want to go to, and we'll let you just go with the court, whatever. We, you know, just make a call. Hey, I make a call. I tell my mom, Mom, I'm getting out tomorrow, you know. Mm -hmm. They were there at 7 in the morning. Hey, I, I put the shit over my window, covered up. I said, I'm not coming out. Mm -hmm. I'm not coming out. I'm not going to back to New Hampshire. They're like, listen, how about we let you get all your stuff? You can bring all your stuff. We can, you know, they bribe you, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I end up going, and... uh I went up there with a guy from, uh, from Somerville, a great guy named Fitzo. So me and Fitzo go up to, um, to New Hampshire together to Brentwood because now I have to go see about the violation for the mm -hmm. two to four suspended. So I get up there and um, friggin', I'm, uh, now he's, he, we're on the top tier. Now Kid yells in the vent, hey, you remember me from Bill Rick? I'm like, oh, what's up? How you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Two days went by and I'm, I go out, me and Fitzo do our work out. They're all looking at me and him like we're crazy because they're just on a different time. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so I'm shaking up my boxes at the end of the tier by a cell. And uh, the kid comes out of the cell and he looks at me and he's like, little short, chubby dude. He's like, hey, don't shake that shit out in front of my cell. I go, who are you? He goes, you don't recognize your own mm -hmm. brother? It was my real brother. Wow. I was like, are you serious? He goes, I wasn't going to come up to you. I didn't, I've known you've been here two days, but I didn't want to come up to you because I was scared. Mm. I go, no, 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 listen, where that fam, that's dropped in here. This is my world. Oh, no. I, mm. Hey, my cellmate, he moved out. I moved in my, my brother and my cell. I'm like, man, let's start our life together, yeah. dude. And uh, like, you know, he, you know, he didn't understand that world. So before I got there, they had some fake C dubs. I know the real ones, man. And I, there's some good people, man. And uh, you know, every, everybody got their good group and their bad group. But I know a lot of good guys that are C dubs. But these guys weren't. They were in New Hampshire. They just heard about it and want, thought they were somebody they weren't. And um, so, because I've asked, and no one knows who these people were. So anyhow, we're. Uh, he, we're in the cell one day and he tells me, he's like, I, you know, I'm like, what's wrong? He goes, I owe these guys a hundred dollars. And I go, why? He goes, they said when they did a room search, when the room I was in a couple weeks ago, when the book went missing, that I got to pay for it. I go, what? So I got out for their tear time because the tears are split. Yeah. And I sat down with all three of them. I said, hey, we got to talk real quick. I go, listen, let me tell you about your book. They're like, what, what, what book? They're trying to already call, please. I'm mm. like, dude, I found the book and I ripped it up and I flushed it. What's up? Right now. And they're like, no, it's not that serious. I go, yeah, because you know I'll get busy. And, and he won't. So you're going to pick on him? Like, that's, mm. I thought you guys was against that. And I'm not saying it about them. I'm saying about these three individuals with pieces of shit. Right. And uh, one of them was Mikey Daniels. Uh, kid's a stray rat. Anyway, just, I'm just throwing that. I don't want to throw that prison whole shit out there. I'm just saying that this kid was trying to extort mm -hmm. my brother for something. He, he didn't even, he, he, there was no book. Mm -hmm. you know, it was just a scam. Mm -hmm. So I got pretty upset about it, and he was embarrassed that I took it there because he's like, I'm supposed to be the older brother. Mm -hmm. I go, but in here, man, you got to let me take the reins because they'll step right over you. They don't care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They don't yeah. care. So Fitzo was like, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I feel bad about everything with Fitzo because, like, he, he you know, he sent me some, some money to go upstate with, man. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, it was crazy. So I, get, I go upstate now for the two to four. 
I ended up doing the two to four. So uh, upstate New Hampshire, is this a different... Um... Now I'm going to the state prison. Okay, where's that? And just... So now R&D re- receiving discharges in Concord. Okay. Now that's um, that's our... Uh, that's just like, and then they have a yard there. So they have two drug units. One's 90 days in Concord, one's six months in Berlin. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, dude, I'm like, I'm thinking I'm doing the 90 day one because they said they'll suspend my bottom number upon completion of the program. So I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, let's let's see what happens. And it takes a few months to get in anyway. So I, when we all do our, we all do 90 days in New Man, we come out, we have our bags all up. Everyone's like Concord North, Concord South. Concord H building. Mine says NCF. I'm like, what the fuck's NCF? They're like, that's North Country facility. You're going to Berlin. Mm. I'm like, how? I haven't even gotten in trouble yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what, you know what I mean? They're like, well, I guess it's something with you, you know, with with, with past and you know, institutional record, institutional, like that, yeah, yeah, whatever it was. Yeah. They, they sent me right up there. Now that that program six months, and you got to wait to get in. Mm-hmm. Um, so I ended up going up there, and uh, now. Speaking of that, I sat next to a kid just t- two days ago. So I sat next to a kid from Lowell named Timmy Smith. R.I.P. Timmy. He died two days ago. I sat next to him across from him at the mass table for a year every day. Mm-hmm. He died two days ago. Yeah. And this was a kid that met me at the last time I saw him was at a hotel and wouldn't give me anything because he goes, speed bag, I don't want to enable you. I love you, dude. Mm-hmm. And that was the last time I saw him, man. Now he's gone. Sorry for your loss. Yeah. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, man. He's, you know, he's he was such a great kid. It's just like we're losing too many people, man. I, sure. I know, man. I want to go on to like a, just a straight friggin' robin spree and just and just rob it and flush it and just take them all down. Mm-hmm. Like you know, is this the bid where you start to? Because like you said last time, you get out, suspend the sentence, right to getting more warrants and everything. Is this the bid where you start to this turn is where things I around? Turn, this is where I turn things around because here's what happens. So once you do that drug program, it's a lateral move to the minimum security in Concord, New Hampshire. So I go to the minimum there. Now, I go to the minimum and um, you can smoke. You can. Everyone's got TVs. You know, the, the Suboxone in Berlin is 400 for one Suboxone. Over there, it's like 50 cents for a quarter. Like, mm-hmm. I just wasn't using them. I was mm-hmm. just like, I, it's, I'm done like that. Yeah. Game's over. It's yeah. time to just do right. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't even gambling. I was just chilling. And uh, next thing you know, my name got, I'm, at this point, I'm past the two-year mark. Um, it was a two to four. I could have paroled it too, but you have to do that program. And then like, and then if you don't, what happens, parole just denies you. So I, I finished it finally. I had a few, you know, hiccups up there, a couple mm-hmm. incidents or whatever. I finished it though. Nice. And now I get to the halfway house. The halfway house is next to the minimum, right next to it. And um, I didn't know if I was going to make it through there because people talk to you any type of way in there. And I'm like, just because we're in a halfway house doesn't mean shit. You right. still got to be... You know, we're still on respect mode here. Mm-hmm. Like, and uh, I just like a lot of like games. It's, I was just what I did though is I paroled to my own apartment up the street. Mm-hmm. So I worked at a Buffalo Wild Wings, and what I would do is I'd walk to the Buffalo Wild Wings, and I would stop in my apartment on the way. You know, just throw a few things in there, little knickknacks, got it all set up. So when I paroled to my apartment. I was all set. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was set, set to go. And that place was awesome. Like you it had a door. You came up to the stairs and there was a one bedroom, just huge open everything in utilities mm. include six fifty a month. Yeah. So how how's that feel now? You're going from like you're stepping down from prison to minimum, but now well, you get parole into your own spot. I mean You know, you would think I'd be happy as a pig and shit. And I was for a while because yeah. I was clean and everything was great and was it not enough for you. It, you know, it wasn't even that. Is you know what it was was like First off, about my brother. Now, when we're in the when we're in the cell together, he didn't talk to my mother for years. She came up and put the five grand up to get his ass out. Mm. Now he's like, "Don't worry, you'll never have to go without shoes. You'll never have to just stay on the poker table. I'll make sure." He didn't even answer the calls I paid for. That's why I say that mud family, blood family, that shit don't mean shit. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, now my my real brother's Frankie Hoyt. That's my brother. Anyhow, and that's who makes these teas. By the way, so I'm not trying to throw a plug in, but that's no, my good. brother. That's what it's about, bro. That's we, my we brother. We're trying to plug everybody. Yeah. Fuck that. Hell yeah. I love you. I love, Bobby, I love you, Let's kid. Go, bro, man. straight. Love you, kid. you already know. Um, anywho, what was I, Bobby? I forgot. You were talking bad. about um, you and your brother falling out, but okay. you were saying that it wasn't enough. You had your own apartment. I had my own yeah. apartment. He lived up the street. I thought everything like I was. He's like, I, I once I saw him walk up the street one day, He, I knew right away it was him. I go, dude. I got to ask you, what the hell's your, pro- you didn't even answer my calls, man. Well, I knew you were doing good. I know you got hustle. I know, it's not the point, buddy. I didn't give a fuck about you, excuse my language, about you sending me money. I wanted to freaking just talk to you, Did dude. Did you feel like he didn't care about you? Oh, he didn't. 
Wow. He didn't. I Did mean, you feel betrayed? But I yeah, mean, you must have got time. close at being in the cell together. We, we spent, uh, we like spent, it was all for nothing. We spent Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it, it just like living in a cell together. Like, a bathroom. Bathroom. Yeah. Well, that's it. And uh, I just thought it was going to be a different type of whatever. Um, you know, I don't care, really. It is what it is. Even when we were younger, he was a snob. He just grew up in New Hampshire, and he was just kind of snobby. Yeah. And that's just how, that's his thing. But whatever. I'm not, I shouldn't throw dirt on my own brother. It's just that, that's just hey, how man, I feel. Life is messed up for everybody, so it's just like, you got to yeah. kind of understand that and just, yep. do, what he does his got, own just thing. do what you got to do. That's yeah. it. You know, yep. No resentment. No. Nah. But uh, he's a cook. He's doing good, man. I hope he sees this and he's doing good. I don't wish harm on him, and, and I just like. So, do you end up sabotaging that situation? Well, with the apartment and stuff. I stayed clean for a long time. Well, for a while. How'd now, you do it? Uh, I'll tell you this. I just didn't go to Boston. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to Boston. And, location, uh, location, location. And I didn't call old people, man. Yeah. And I just said no. And I could be in a friggin' trap house. The only one that's gonna do do drugs is me. Mm -hmm. uh, no one can force me to do shit. So it's like. But I just stayed away from them situations. And, um, you know, then I lost my mother. And mm -hmm. that's when shit got real, yeah. you know. And I uh, that got real, man. Because, you know, she would do a little line. She did a little lines of dope. Man. She stopped the coke. She didn't even do with that shit. Mm -hmm. She did little lines here and there, you know, a couple per. And she was just getting older. And, um, you know, when she overdosed, man, I got a call from the Everett police at, like, fucking 2 a.m., I'm like, I've been in New Hampshire. I haven't done nothing. They're like, no, it's not for you. It's mm. your mother. We got. I'm like, I just talked to her. I'm like, what? I boom. I jump in my caddy. I drive down there. Now, prior to this, so I do want to say, I'll tell you after. So I drive down. You know, with my girl, she's like, she's looking at me to like for me to break. I'm like, I'm just like hoping it's not true. But mm. uh, you know, I went up in the apartment. The TV still blaring. The, um, you know, there's blood. There's vomit. There's all types of shit. Wow. And uh, I just broke down, man. That's devastating. You know what I mean? I broke down, and the people that were up there, all they had to do was just fucking call 911. You know what I mean? Instead, they robbed her. Wow. Now, one of them's dead, good. And mm. then the other one just got out of prison. He's a bitch, too. Mm. But it's just the point. Just call 911, man. They got a law called the Good Samaritan Law, mm. where, like, you could just, even if you were there, if you call 911 and, and there's drugs, you don't get charged, man. Like immunity. Immunity, yeah. yeah. It's just, it's just, it's whatever it is. It's they passed that law, so mm -hmm. people didn't die like that. Now, if my mother had money and you looked up her friggin' what's it called, her uh, obituary and stuff, if she had money, that would have been a different scenario. Damn. You know what I'm saying? But they'd say, oh, it's just another addict, mm -hmm. gone. So I take it. I mean, I have both my parents. I'm blessed and I'm truly lucky. So you lost both your parents i mean is does that hit you like do you feel like super alone in the world yeah and dude you start spiraling yeah yeah Damn. i do and, i do man and then how, how long does that self-sabotage thing last and what stops it do, do you have to go to jail to get clean yeah again? well it's not even so much the drugs i need the drugs to be normal sometimes i need to take a break a breather i need mm -hmm. a, a sip of maker's mark so is it more mental health that you're dealing with yeah, a lot. Yeah, man, a lot of it is. A lot of it is. Like, uh, you know, I was, like, my, my my last incident, I was in a sober house. You saw me on the podcast and shit. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not even going to say where or nothing because it's, you know, I don't want to put anyone in jeopardy, but I was taking hydroxy cup, but I was clean. But I was taking them like an addict. Three, four, three, you know what I mean? I'm losing weight. I feel good. And then, like, you know, working out. And then, like, all of a sudden, my 121st day of being clean was the day I went into psychosis. I was introducing people to my mother. I was walking around with no shirt on and black gloves thinking people are coming. Wow. Like just, and the, so the sober house, you know, Bundy's my, know me since I was 18, but he, he's like, I got to call the ambulance for you, bro. Yeah. Out of love, not out of, you know, he gave me a hug. Like, I'm like, and I, I, it took me two weeks to snap out of it. Were you not? Sleeping as well? Because no. I know sleeping can kind of do that. Yeah, no. Like, I would get, like, a, a nap in, and then I got horrible, like, just, I don't know if it's PTSD dreams or whatever yeah. it is. Sometimes I just don't want to go back to, and then, mm -hmm. boom, I go to sleep. I, it just gets shitty. But I don't, like, you know, only reason I'm throwing this out there is I don't want people, to, like, to be out there trying to feel bad. I just want people to know that you're not the only one going through this shit, yeah. that other people are going through this shit, mm -hmm. too. Where does that leave you now? What's... Where are you at as far as cases, probation, open, anything like that you're dealing with? Uh, still yeah, kinda... I, still, I still got a couple things that okay. I got to clear up. You got to go, okay. Yeah, okay. I do. I do, man. I mean, so it's having that, having things, oh, it's easy to just kind of let me self-sabotage again. Yeah. It doesn't seem like you're on that. 
path right well, here you came in today i mean yeah no i had do, to man because i love positive? and respect you dude how are you how are you managing to stay positive even though dude, just to the point where you're done with it you it just could just be so much it. worse man yeah it could be so much worse too i say good morning to people they go what's good about it like fuck yeah, you right. you woke up today mm -hmm. like so i i know i could be in a cell man it could mm -hmm. be worse i know i got shit i gotta handle mm -hmm. and and like I got so institutionalized, dude, that like, oh, taking meds. Oh, you need meds to sleep. Yeah. You're weak. Oh, mm -hmm. you need you need this. You need that. You're weak. You're weak. Everything's you weak. Like, yeah. and it, 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 it fucking brainwashed me because all that BS in jail, when you come out here, it means nothing. Yeah. It means zilch. Not to I, anybody that matters. No. You know? No, not to the big businessmen that want to hear about you fighting move teams or even even uh, courtesy flushing. Right, fucking, right. They don't want to hear that mm -hmm. shit, dude. Mixes and all that BS, dude. They don't care, bro. Yeah. They just want to know where the money's at. Yeah. They want to know what you can do to help them. Mm -hmm. You don't matter. People want to see you do good in this world, but no one wants to see, do them, see you doing better than them. Yeah. What are you doing today for your mental health, your sobriety? Ah uh, man, I'm just you know I'm blessed. I'm staying with a good friend, you know who, mm -hmm. and uh, you know he's helped me out just for a week or two, and then um, you know I'm hoping to get into this program. Uh, it's in Weymouth. It's like a dual diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, and I, like I, I don't think I'll ever go back to using drugs, or alcohol again. Just you know, I might I might crack a couple beers for the game, but right. like I'm not like a unhappy. Dr I'm not like a dude that drinks booze and gets stupid. I give away yeah. all my money and want it back when I'm in, hung right, over right, in the right. morning. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a happy drunk. Like, but it's still I can't do it. It's just some people can, some people can't. But you know, I've always enjoyed a couple beers. You know what I mean? But. Um, so what is the main message that you wanted to get across today? The main message I want to get across, man, is just say this, that like, you know, no matter what you're going through, man, you can do it. You mm. can get out there every morning. I still get out here and grind, go downtown, yeah. you know, you know, and I, you know, I got a lot of pain, a lot of loss, but it gets better, man. You just, and let that shit out of you. Mm -hmm. Don't hold it in. Let it out. Go hit. What do you, what's it called again? I want to do hear yours again. The fitness. Bounce, bounce back. Bounce, bounce back, back fitness, fitness man. Yeah, like absolutely. something, you know, I, I'm down for shit like that. I want to do positive things mm -hmm. because it doesn't, the, the negative promoting beef, tension, drama, all that makes nothing but heat. It mm -hmm. brings nothing but heat. Absolutely. Now, if someone gets crazy and things need to happen, that's different. But unless you put your hands on me, threaten me, spit on me, then it, I just go ahead, run your mouth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and then like, I just want to do, like I got a YouTube channel, Speed Bizzle 617, but I want to do positive things. Like I love animals. I love working out. Like, and, and there's one thing I didn't answer that I was trying to remember. Um, that like helped me with myself was exercise, mm -hmm. get being in good shape. I'm not at the moment, of course, but like that hydroxy cut, like my addiction was like, okay, two of these, I, I sweat it out, I got it in, let me take four tomorrow. Like, mm. you don't do that. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And so like, you know, and um, my also my motivation is for the people I lost, man. Yeah. I got so many people that, I, that uh, are gone. I told you, like I had a fucking army of people that, yeah, I got friends in Taunton, New Bedford, Fall River, I got friends, especially, never mind Boston, just, I mean, all over. We have a gritty ass, tough state. Um, you know, a lot of people like, you know, they want to giggle and, and he, he, ha, ha about our accents. And that's funny and shit. But you know what? A lot of our places, they'll turn your fucking smile to a frown quick. Mm -hmm. And um, but we're also a city of love. Yeah. Like we don't like, you know, I, I just hate to see Michelle Wu up there talking about racist this, race that, race this, race that. Well, Boston's not about that. Mm -hmm. We're like, if you're good, you're good. Mm -hmm. That's it. Now, certain places, you're not just going to walk in there and think you're, you're somebody. You're gonna, right. You'll get your fucking wig split. But it's just the matter of, like, if you you can do it to me. This is just my philosophy I want to pass on to the younger, younger crew. You can do anything in this world as long as you do it with a little bit of respect, mm -hmm. a lot of respect, and a little bit of integrity. Yes. Integrity is the meaning of way. integrity is doing something that you would do when no one is looking. Mm -hmm. So, and like, I'll tell you this. Let me just give you one example. Biden. I personally can't stand him. I thought because I grew up shitty that I was a Democrat. I feel like it was two different fights. I feel like back then it was pot gay marriage. I mm -hmm. feel now it's just we want to do whatever we want. And you, the right, can't do anything. Mm. I don't know. I never thought I'd ever call myself a conservative, but I, I sure will never call myself a liberal, man. 
You know, I, like because they're trying to they're trying to segregate us. What Biden says when he gets in office, the number one thing we have to worry about in this country is white supremacy. Fuck off, dude. We got a lot more problems than that, buddy. I don't know. It's just, it's just it's just a divisive thing. They try yeah. to divide us when it's like we really need to come, come together, together. And, and unite and really just try to love everything you know yeah. like, like it like this table was wood it was alive at some point yeah. you know what i mean like love it like it's a conscious being it, yeah it, it, i don't know man it may, it may sound too too uh too good to be true but we're yeah. getting there we're i getting think there's there. a bigger perfect. there's a big awakening you know yeah, we're, we're doing stuff like this hell yeah buddy hell you know? yeah so talk to me about some of the um the short-term goals man what you yourself you know, up is even if it's just losing a few pounds it's losing weight man it's losing weight it's getting on my feet every morning First, I get on my knees and I just, and it doesn't matter who I pray to, I look up above to the people I lost mm. and just say, hey, I'm doing this for you. I put these under my bed, so when I wake up, I have to get on my knees. And then I just say, thank you for this day, whoever's up there. I don't mm -hmm. know who's up there. Um, I just I just do it for the people I lost, man. Okay. And I just say, thank you. I say a couple things and um, you know, to myself and like prepare myself for the day and then I go and I get it. Um mm -hmm. I'm on my feet, man. And like like one goal that I do is I try to look for the good in somebody. It's easy to be like, Oh, your sneakers suck. I had those first. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, that tattoo, that's not and I've had mm -hmm. one of them. Like mm -hmm. you know how to down someone. Mm -hmm. But instead if you look for the good in people, if you look for the fucking Instead of looking at somebody as like, what do they call them, ops now? Look at them as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I can make some money with this person. Maybe this person, look for the good in somebody and, and not use them, but use their good for the better. Mm -hmm. And I just, I treat people, man, how I like to be treated Absolutely. until a line is crossed. But it's, it's I never have problems no more mm -hmm. because I treat people how I want to be treated. If you treat me good, I'll treat you better. Okay. Treat me like shit, it's just on. So... <laughs> Say, life. <laughs> say everything goes the way it's supposed to go or the way you would ideally want it to go in five years. Where do you see yourself with the tours, with the YouTube channel? Man, I mean, I, you're everything. Maybe honestly, see. like, I want to be doing something with comedy, maybe. Mm -hmm. I want to be doing something. That, I'll tell you who I listened to growing up was Howard Stern. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this. A lot of people don't know this man, but he's someone I follow. His name's Star. Strange Thoughts and Revelations. And he was the only one. He used to write. And remember Source Magazine? Of course. He used to write <laughs> under the name Buck Wild in the back. Mm. And um, so his show was called The Star of Buck Wild. And it was the original drink champs. They would get shit-faced and bring people up there. And Star ran it his way. And the reason I relate with Star so much is because he's objective. I'm objective. I, like I told you about, I believe in Ayn Rand, like her philosophy. And I'll let people get into that if they want to. But... It's about being objective. It's about like, you know, I do believe in some altruism, but mm -hmm. I, at the same time, I believe in, you got to look out for you. Yeah. We, like the bum outside just now, a guy that knows you, he's, he's, he wakes up, he's yelling, who got food? Mm -hmm. Who got food? Mm -hmm. right, right, right. I wanted to just a bear paw him. I'm like, shut up, dude. Mm -hmm. dude. I just went and stole a Chubani out of friggin' CVS. You go do it too. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, I hate that shit, man. I'm so, so what you know, about with the tour, though? Ideally, would you like to be doing three, four a week with 20 people? Like, man, what, what I would love to just be goals? having Boston rocking these red, white, and blue because I'm still a proud American mm -hmm. um, and just out there just getting it, man. And, okay. and, and, you know, this is tour season. It's coming. It's going to be a great one. Uh, I'm going to go to the top one day. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be at the top of whatever it is I'm doing mm -hmm. if I can just put my mind together. So and why don't you try to put the tour stuff on the YouTube? Why don't yeah. you do the tours? Hey, this is the you yeah. into the history. I think yeah. that would be a great idea. That's a where good you, idea. I mean, where do you see that channel going to? I mean, have fun with it, but yeah, why not do that? The tour, just do a tour, even if it's by yourself. If you got nobody at the time, and just yeah. to show and promote yeah. it, man. It's, Whatever, That's a good idea. The way I see it is like whatever you're doing this day and age yeah. that you like to do or you're doing yep. anyway, record it. If yeah. you're doing it anyway, record it. Why not? You know what I mean? And yeah. then I think that'll be a great idea to practice and everything. Too. Yeah. And you could see yourself too and be like, okay, maybe I could deliver do that a little better. different. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but you get a little better every time. What's it going to look like in five years? Oh, my God. Man. You know what I mean? Get oh a little God. better every yeah. day, bro. So, Hell yeah, man. I mean, if there was anything else you wanted to touch on, man, before I let you go, or just some closing words. I just want to say thank you, first and foremost. Uh, my bad about my language. It comes out. I'm still working on that. Um, mm. I just want to say thank you, Bobby, for what you do, bro. You are putting Boston, number one, on the map, but in a way where it's like, hey, 
we're going to come together and just do this. And maybe like maybe one of these these days we have a cookout with all the guests you've had on. Absolutely. We all bring some food together. I'll use the gangster card. <laughs> handball tournament, basketball. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure man. something out. Absolutely. Like we should, bro. We and, uh, and, and, you know, something positive. Show these young guys that, hey, it's not all about that because it seems like, every, you know, I, you know, I listen to some drill music and shit because I like it gets me revved up, you know, mm -hmm. but like. You know, a lot of the times, though, some like people are getting the wrong message. My last thing is just treat people how you want to be treated, man. Yeah. Treat people with respect, and they'll, they, hey, you you go to the top. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna yeah. go to the top, man. I like that too. And, and even if it's not the way I look at it too, like, okay, I'm not gonna treat an old lady the way I would want to be treated, but I'm gonna treat that old lady how I would want someone to treat my grandmother. Damn I'm right, I'm gonna man. treat that little girl crossing the street the way I would want someone to treat yeah my daughter, my sister. Yeah. If I, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. So. I think, like you said, respect, integrity, a little bit goes a long way. It does, man. A excuse me. Uh, you know, excuse I mean, there's me. There's so Thank much ignorance just, out there right it, now. It's crazy, man. And you know what? I blame a lot of it on the COVID stuff because it just put people in the house. It seemed like, you know, that like they forgot their man is. Like mm. I walked by, dude, people just bump me, man. And I look, I stop and I look at them. I'm like, just chill. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, it's so friggin' ignorant, man. I, I, I really despise the trainer. I never mm -hmm. wore sunglasses in my life. Bundy <laughs> gave me a pair a while ago. I, I put them on on the train so people like, because I, I just mm -hmm. want to have blinders on. Mm -hmm. But anyway, man, I just want to thank you for having me on, man. Absolutely. 617, baby. Let's East go. Cambridge, Boston, the you house. Let's know. fucking go, baby. That's Let's Nick, go. AKA Speedbag, Speedbag, baby. Speedbag. Let's get it. I'm your boy, B. Luke. This is the Bounce Back Podcast. Remember, it is what it is. What's next is what you make it. On that note, peace. We Chicken grease. Bounce back. We got a moment. When they see you down, there's no